Welcome, Susanna. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Emily. Hi, everybody. Where are you joining us from today? Today, I'm somewhere in Austria. It's called Upper Austria. <laughs> I was like, it looks dark and cozy and beautiful there. <laughs> it is. <laughs> so I introduced you. You're an author of a book, Pragmatic Psychology, and um, which is kind of crazy to talk about being happy, and it's not all about problems. Um, psychology is a lot about fixing problems, and you tend to talk about possibilities. <laughs> so what in the world inspired you to write that book and take such a different perspective on everything? Um, I always had a hard time uh, to really get the problem. I mean, so many people in this world talk about problems. I mean, this is what we all grow up with, the reality of problems. And um, I always had a hard time, you know, really seeing the problem. Um, for me, it's always been more real to see, okay, there is a lightness to everything. It's just a matter of changing your point of view. And so when I started to work as a psychologist, and especially with therapy, um, and meeting all these people who were, you know, of course, coming for problems, and on top of that, most of them had, you know, kinds of diagnosis, I always had a hard time seeing the problem and especially seeing the incapacity that is supposed to be what this, these people had. All I could see was um, people who are different, people who function different, and people who see the world in a different, unique way. And so, you know, talking with these people... Um, and applying the access tools, I realized, okay, wait a second, there is a totally different approach available for all of us to change what we call problems into possibilities. And that is, you know, where, because you mentioned pragmatic psychology, you know, pragmatic is nothing else than doing what works. And most of us have learned to be extremely dramatic looking at the problem, trying to figure out why, rather than, okay, what's right about this? You know, how can I use this so-called problem um, as a platform to find out what else is possible? Wow. Can you talk more about that and what, how someone gets from taking a problem to actually creating a possibility? Like, I don't know if you use bars with your clients or like what experience have you seen with that or some of the other tools like how have you incorporated these like access consciousness tools into your practice well bars is a big big part of it i mean i'm getting my bars run as often as possible <laughs> you know this is a priority i make in my life you know i have a lot to do but you know we all can make priorities and um getting my bars run as often as possible at least once a week is something that um creates this space of lightness um, and plus all the other access consciousness tools um, that are so helpful. And Dane talked about um, some of them already in the first interview. So it's basically like the space that occurs is, you know, like when you're in the middle of a problem, you, you know, we tend to contract and we make ourselves really small and we see nothing else than what's wrong and what's horrible. But when we expand our space, you know, also the exercise that Katarina was, um, was playing with with us, it's when you expand our space, it's like being an eagle that flies above, you know, this so-called reality of what's considered as real, for example, the problem, and you, you see what is, but you don't, you're not part of it. You're like, you, you, and you're not, you're not separated from it either. You just, you see what is, but you get to have your space at the same time. And that's something that the bars create and that's something that all the access consciousness tools create. And um, so, you know, it's like right now in times like these, it's so like problems are so loud. It's like everything is, is supposed to be horrible. We're not supposed to have a future, at least not a good future. And it's like everybody screams this, you read this everywhere. And it's so easy to like be drawn into this so just because you, like, this is something that Dane said um, a while ago, and I love it. Just because, you, just because you swim in carrot soup doesn't mean you're a carrot. 
So, which means it's basically like, just because there's so many people who seem hopeless right now or seem um, unhappy or anxious or depressed, just because you're aware of that doesn't mean you are part of that. And that's something that, you know, I highly invite you guys to explore out there to what is my reality? Because it's, it's like, once you start this exploration of what is my reality, and, you know, when I say what is my reality, most of us go, I don't know. I mean, I know what my mom's reality is. I know what my dad's reality is. I know what my teacher's reality is. But my reality? No idea. I mean, most of us know more what other people need from us than what what is our world but this is an exploration worthwhile and it's it can start by you know what where's the lightness you know like follow the path of lightness what makes your world go what makes your world lighter and start choosing towards that um in even in the midst of other people, you know, going crazy or being depressed and anxious, what if you're willing to be different? And how different are you already? You know, how many of you out there have always been different, have accused of being different and being maybe the black sheep in the family or maybe even gotten diagnosis for your difference? But what if this is one of the greatest... Um, how do you say in English? What is this one of one of the greatest, um, like a um, an award? You know, like people telling you, "Hey, you're different." But what if that is a good thing? And that that finding your reality, finding finding the lightness of your reality is is uh, where you start going on. What makes me feel lighter? What expands and lightens up my world? And Maybe you want to start writing that down, you know, because in the midst of everything, you know, we tend to forget the tools. We tend to, you know, be, you know, distracted. But what if you start writing down two or three or up to 10, whatever things that you could do and engage with that nurture that lightness, that nurture your reality? You know, maybe it's skiing, maybe it's playing with your dog, maybe it's singing, dancing, Whatever it is, um, you know, because what you, what you, um, what you engage with, is what gets to grow in your life. It's just like with plants, you know. If you if you talk with your plants, if you engage with your plants, they probably grow in a totally different way than if you wouldn't. And it's the same with your life. If you engage with the things that make you feel lighter, that gets to grow just like a plant. And this is where you can start, you know, nurturing your reality and the willingness to, to be different. I'm just talking and talking, Emily. I know. love it. But that is so beautiful because it's so seemingly so simple, but engaging with the things that make you lighter and not like right now, what we're kind of being told is to engage with all of the trauma and the heaviness. And if you're not engaging with it, you're not paying attention or, you know, and it's like, wow, when you said that, and you said something about being aware and can you and can you talk a little bit more about being aware of the trauma, of the stress, of depression, and how that can be different? You might be someone that has decided you you are depressed or you are stressed, and not to make light of that. And there's when you mention awareness, there's a very different conversation <laughs> that you could have there. Can you talk more about that? Yeah, I think like most people don't even get that they are aware. <laughs> yeah, it's you know like. For a long time before I, you know, I found the access tools, I thought that everything is mine. I thought that like when I'm depressed, it's my depression. When I'm unhappy and cranky, it's my cranky. I wouldn't even have considered that this has. I wouldn't even linked it to awareness, you know, until I was asked, you know, questions open up possibilities. So until I was asked, so. What what is that thing you call being cranky? Like, is this even yours, or is this something that you are aware of from you know maybe someone else or a lot of other people? And uh, I started to explore that, and I started to use this with my clients also, and it opened up a whole new world of you know space and possibilities. So basically, it's like you could ask yourself, 
you, and don't think about it because this does not make log logical sense. If it wouldn't, you know, this would be a different world, but it doesn't make logical sense. So don't try to get it. Just like, let that, let that question do its job, you know? Um, so the question is truth. How aware are you? You know, and if there's, when I ask that question, if you go, something is lighter, something is like, wait a second, this, this does something to me. Um, this is like an acknowledgement of, okay, this is actually something that is true for me. I don't get it. And she said, I don't need to get it. Okay, cool. But this is a space where I'm like, okay, I'm aware. What, what is that? You know, awareness is basically where you, you have the capacity to pick up things that are going on around you. And it might be people, it might be the earth, it might be anything. It could be animals, it could be plants, you know, like basically everything talks, not verbally only, as we have learned in school, not only non-verbally, but things speak to you energetically all the time. I mean, your, your animals tell you when they want to go for a walk. They don't say, I want to go for a walk. They tell you energetically, your plants tell you they need water very subtly you know so this is like when when you have things going on like depression and anxiety which is so much right now like imagine how like just get the energy of how many people right now have depression and anxiety or say they have depression and anxiety millions billions of people okay so could it be that when you think that you are depressed and anxious that is actually something that you pick up from other people and it is not even yours, you know? And in fact, 99.99999% of what you think is going on in your world, in your head, is not yours. What? That's strange. It's not logical, but it is what is. And notice, like, just mentioning that, Maybe something moves in your world. Maybe you just, maybe there's a little tiny crummy more space opening up and going, wait a second. The things that drive me crazy on a daily basis when I Google something or read something, you know, or go on, on social media and I contract, uh, it's not mine. I'm aware. I'm aware of what other people have going on. Yes, you are. And that is a space that you can start exploring wait a second, how much of what I engage with on a daily basis, why am I so depressed, how can I handle my anxiety, is actually an awareness. In other words, a capacity you have to be aware of what's going on in the world. And so there's this wonderful tool called Who Does This Belong To? Um, who does this belong to? Like, um, you just ask, who does this belong to? Truth, is this really mine? And it will show you that and there are tons of videos, you know, if you need more explanation about this tool. And, and I'm sure Dane and Gary have a lot of videos also you can watch on exactly how this tool works. But, you know, you just start exploring of how much you are stressing about on a daily basis that has nothing to do with your world. Question? Yeah, oh, oh, and it's such a simple question. Like, who does this belong to? And if it gets even a little bit lighter, and I remember first hearing, well, of course it's heavy though because it's so real and significant. And but when you when I asked that and it got lighter, it's it also takes you out of being the victim and the effect of this reality, and it starts empowering you to like have this different perspective. So right now, so as you become acknowledge your awareness, right, of everything that's going on in the world, how do you then choose to be happy? Because you are what, like you're aware of all this going going on, you know. And the tagline to your book is "Tools to Be Crazy Happy," and it's like happiness isn't even valued, especially right now. It's like, so how do you how do you acknowledge and empower yourself with awareness and also choose to be happy? Well, you know, the cool thing is, um, you know, what, the first thing is like when you are aware that the things uh, that are going on in the world is not yours. That already is the first step to happiness because it creates more lightness. You're like, what? All that stuff that I use my energy, my thinking on is not even mine. Okay, so what is my reality then? And this, you know, it's like that is moving you already towards that lightness that is truly your reality. So and how like it's like how different would you have to be willing to be to choose happiness in times of unhappiness? 
And it's, you know, it's this, uh, this choice, you know, it's, this is something that none of us have, uh, I think most of us haven't been taught that we actually have choice. I mean, happiness is a choice. And you can like look in situations where you go, okay, something is occurring. It something occurred the way you didn't want it to occur. Um, and you have this crossroad. You can go to, okay, I'm going to be really cranky and upset about it. Or I'm just going to go, you know what? What if this is not relevant? What if this is actually not relevant to me? And what if I choose the other crossroad, like the other w- way, and I'm just choosing happiness? And it's like your point of view creates your reality. And what if we remind ourselves that we have the choice, we have choice in every moment. And especially right now, I mean, right now, no choice is being promoted. Right now, people tell you, you don't have choice because someone else decides over your life what you get to do and what you're not supposed to do. But what if within all of that, you know, that structure, that not no choice that is being promoted as reality right now, you actually realize, wait a second, hmm, do I really not have choice or does it just look like I don't have choice? What do you know? And what, what you know, what's right will always make you feel lighter. What's true for you will always make you feel lighter. What's heavy is a lie. So if you just go, do I really not have choice or do I actually have choice within that whole structure, this whole scenario to actually, despite of everything that's going on, actually still choose happiness, you know? And it's those things where you go, okay, so what can I choose today or in these, this moment, in these 10 seconds that expands that lightness, that expands that joy that I be, you know, and you probably are, you know, are seen as really weird and different if you choose to be, you know, happy in times like these, but you know what, your difference, your crazy is what moves our world forward. What if you allow yourself to be so differently and so happy and you know crazy happy because you know if you're happy you're supposed to be crazy you're not really crazy but this is how you have probably seen by others what if you allow yourself to be that because how many people would you inspire to engage with lightness and possibilities rather than hardship and problems and that is what our world and our earth requires especially right now and what if you knew that you have that choice to engage in depression and anxiety and nurture that or feeding possibilities and lightness. And the cool thing is you have, you don't have to know how it's this moment by moment choice of now, what now, what can I engage with? And even if you go for depression, anxiety, crankiness, it's not wrong. And that's the cool thing because consciousness includes everything and doesn't judge anything. It's where if you go for, if you have a moment of it's hopeless, it's horrible, it's all, enjoy it, you know, allow it. Go for an Oscar nominated, you know, depression moment. And if you don't judge yourself for going there, you're probably getting over it really, really fast. So what if you don't have to be happy, but you get to be happy? What if this is a choice you have? And whatever you choose is not wrong. That is so beautiful. Um, And the different conversation, too. I just want to let people know you also have a children's book about Henry, (laughs) which is a beautiful invitation to celebrating your difference. Um, And Susanna, you can find Susanna um, on the Access Consciousness website. And your books are in the shop and on Amazon and you're everywhere. And your website, you can find Susanna at, is it SusannaMittermeyer.com? It's SusannaMittermeyer.com and PragmaticPsychology.com. And there's another book called Fairytale Family. If you want to have more ease with family, that's another one you can check out. (laughs) Who would want that? (laughs) Thank you so much. That was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, you, Susanna. Mwah!